I had the dream again. What dream? About the tree. A tree? Da? What tree? It turned into a tree. Why wouldn't I? I never remember my dreams. And that wasn't the end of it. What happened then? I dreamt. I heard hammering in the yard. They cut me down, Gus. They made me into coffins. One of them big fellas wouldn't cut down easy. <laughs> big one, they wouldn't. <laughs> You could chop all day and never get anywhere. So you chop me down, is that it? No. No. You can put a stop to that thought right now. And you can stop that as well. That's only an old stick. You stay here playing with your stick. And I'll go check on the cabbages. That way, one of us is doing something to make sure we don't both starve to death. Jesus, Dad! You wait until the rain stops! For it's good for the roots! Ha! <laughs> Could we stop for a minute, please, sir? Why, what ails you? I am... Um... I can hold it in another while, yeah. Come on. We'll be there soon. It's kind of urgent. Isn't it? All right, sir, sir. For God's sake, stop calling me, sir. Why'd you call me uncle? That's what most of the girls call me, yeah? All right, sir. Jesus, Eddie. Don't look at the state of me. How's 
the men! How the cabbages? Happy is the man who minds his own business. Ah, no, that's not very friendly, is it? You're not my friend. You're admiring the new van, I see. I am in me ass. You got a new one, I see. She settled. Not yet. As many's the lad in Skillet to be happy to take her on. Your Gus, for one. My Gus is far from needing the morally dubious services of a matchmaker. Best looking lad in Skillet. That's as may be. He's not exactly the brightest candle on the Christmas tree now, is he? You keep your slander to yourself, George Lardy! We still know what to do with big moats round here. I let no help. I no help. Think about it, yeah? Well, now cheer your neighbor. What do you think? She's nice one, huh? She's a cutie. Yeah, the van. Take that stuff out of the back. Hello, how are you? Well, what do you think of it? Well, it's very big for a little town like this. for a man's heart, you know. What is it? That dirty reprobate. Bringing a child into the world at his age. If he annoys you so much, what are we doing at his hooli? Oh, never turn up your nose at a free feed. Please. 
brittle. Well, I dropped them down. <clears throat> Another girl back with him. He asked me to take her for you. What? I told him you were too old to be getting married. He's right, he's my enemy. I can kiss my eternal wall goodbye if I start going around doing favors for my enemies. George, now what has he ever done on you? I think you're going daft in your old age. Now you listen to me once and for all, son. A man is measured by his enemies. Right? Well, so you picked George, is it? I did indeed. But I didn't go to half cocked on no. I gave the matter my utmost consideration before I settled on George O'Flaherty. You must have a strong enemy, son. Otherwise, it's too easy to destroy him. I don't understand you at all, Dad. I know that. There you go. Save you having to ask for it. Hello again. You put your eyes back in your head. She's the one you just brought in. Now, maybe you can have a word with George and... Have you heard nothing I've said? No, he's not my enemy. Even if he was, I could only be hands and knees for a chance with a girl like that. Hey, don't say for all. My enemy is your enemy. How thick do you have to be not to understand that? Some occasion. Father Pat, George. George? Tell me, what do you want to call the baby? George. <laughs> so why wouldn't you? Well, here's your help. Well, the party can start, Father Pat. Huh? Well, I'll try and rustle up a few old tunes for you. Huh? Oh, great, great. You will. Fed up with that. He takes to his bed, buries his head in his pillow. Oh, he won't even eat. What am I to do? Hmm? Will you answer me that? Get out of that stretcher. Look at you, half the day gone. Come on, is there dinner in it? There is not. 
I don't feel like being the cook anymore. Get George or Flaherty to fetch you in a woman. I want your dinner handed up to you. Don't you talk like that to your father. Don't you talk like that to your son. Don't be so intent on destroying his life before it even starts. Look, I've made up my mind what to do. George has had his son, so he's happy. So? So he might not be too greedy in the matter of the girl. Well, Harry, what can I do you for? I'll be my talk about the girl. What's there to talk about? Make me an offer. I have no money. I put it all in the cabbages. There's money in cabbages. You're right there. As my Annie, God rest her soul, always said, the future of this country, if it has any future at all, lies in cabbages. She was a fine woman, Annie. She was. But it wouldn't cost you a wink of sleep to take our cabbages, would it? Because you put them on the table, Harry. What would you want with Annie's few cabbages? Huh? Haven't you enough money already to build this boil in the arse of skillet? <sighs> ah, take the bloody cabbages if you want them that badly. From what I hear, it's your Gus who wants something badly. I'll collect the girl in the morning. Now, wait, Harry. What if Eileen stays with us for a couple of weeks more? You know, to help Margaret. She's not over the baby yet. Well, can't you get that Maeve one to help her? Maeve and Margaret don't exactly see eye to eye. <laughs> so you want to change the deal, is that it? What if she stays with you? But she spends the days here and helps Margaret. What if that's not worth all my cabbages? What if I take half? Half. Deal. Deal. Matchmaking is in. My child, this is a confessional. There are certain preliminaries to be observed. Father, I don't even know what he looks like. Gus? Oh, he's a very nice boy. Lives with his father. Just the two of them since Annie and Pat died. His mother? And his brother. She died of a broken heart. She was never the same since the minute they brought Pat's body back and laid him on the kitchen table, covered in blood, full of English bullets. But you must have seen Gus at the party for George's baby. He's a fine-looking lad, dreamy. He was sitting in the corner by himself. That'll be plenty for the wedding. It was a hard old year's work all the same, huh? Good evening, it was. Do you think that that reprobate can just sit back and take half of them? The deal is done now. You're right. You go on. Catch up. It won't be long. Take and his cabbages. Is that it? George, oh high and mighty flouty.
away, me beauties, run away. We'll wipe that smile off of Flaherty's face yet. <sighs> means everything is all right between us, is that it? <laughs> ah, come on now, Harry. It'll take a damn sight more than a few bottles of stout to uh, atone for your sins, George Flaherty! And well you know it! Take a night or that. You will not. Who do you think's going to clean up this mess? The fairies? Stop. Of course, don't. Be off, so that. You go on to bed, Ivy. I'd just like to have a quick word with my son. What is this? Huh? Do you know it's gone completely out of my head? Go on. I'll come in to you if I remember what it was. <sighs> Jesus, go on, son. Don't keep a woman waiting on her own wedding night.
come into bed, Goss? Move. Morning. Daddy. Good morning. Oh. Oh. Well, I suppose you'll be making a start on those dishes now, huh? I have to go to Uncle George's. Uncle? He likes me to call him that. Oh, I'm sure he does. But you must understand, that man is our enemy. And I'd be thankful if you didn't mention his name in front of me again. Don't laugh at me! Well, if you've forgotten your wedding night already, can't you be in any great shakes? Come on. Come over here to me. I want to hear the whole story now. Well... I think he's a bit... troubled. Does it always happen that way, Auntie Margaret? Mostly. Yeah. They're all frightened. The first time. Yeah. And Uncle George? <laughs> He's another story altogether. Let's just say, I was very lucky. But if I'm not very lucky? Then you can give things a little help in hand. Take that milk home with you and give it to him. It's good for more than babies, if you catch me meaning. I got you a little drop of milk. I'm not thirsty. I go on. Just have a little drop. It's sour. Come here to me. Don't me. It's only milk. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, look at me. Oh, sh sh now, come here. Come here. Don't be worrying yourself. Come here. You know I love you. Eileen. Have you ever been with a man before? No. Never met one you liked? Thanked me for it, but he did not. 
If you ask me, he's worse than he was before. And they say marriage is the making of a man. Warm water. Gentle on the hand. Huh? Thanks. I overheard your conversation with Auntie Margaret. I think she prefers you to me now. I don't tell her. <laughs> no, I do. Who can blame her, eh? Auntie's a great woman. Oh, she's a rock. Watch anything, you know that? Is that right? Yes, it is right. I'm crazy about that. You must read it over. That girl Trapes told of you very happy this morning. So you're obviously doing something right, huh? Da. Well, you listen to me! You get nowhere pussyfooting around a woman! You have to put your foot down, show who's boss, crack the rid of it! They love you for it afterwards, they always do! For your half of my cabbages, you can wait. Myself and Gus are picking ours today and taking them to market Saturday. And get yours then. Tell you the truth, your cabbages are the farthest thing from my mind. I'm up to ask you, would you let Eileen stay with us a while longer? Margaret's not well, it's her first child, you know. <laughs> the answer is no. Get that Maeve to help you. Or has Margaret cottoned on to your little game with her, huh? You know what it is, Harry? Never like cabbages. Why don't you keep them all? How does that sound? Well, uh, if, uh... Another month it is, huh? Another two weeks. Deal! Deal! Be 
little beauties. <laughs> Dirty bastard! Bastards! your cake. This old tree is not frightened of the bite of a storm. Ah, oh, there's nothing in the sky this lad need fear. Or under it, neither. Oh, you could throw one of your Bible floods at this fella, and he'd still be there afterwards, hanging on. Tell you the future of this country was in cabbages, ha? Ha! It didn't stop half of them rotting in the ground, did it? They got? I show them the kind of bargain Harry Maloney made. Mate, come on. Let's get out of here before they come to their senses. Where are you going? It can only be a minute now. We did indeed. Sold all my cabbages. And you got a good price for two, I suppose. You suppose, right? And how's the bowl got? And the new daughter in law? Never better the pair of them. Really? That's not what the boys above the skillets were telling us this morning. Oh. And what are the boys in skillet saying, huh? I have a surprise for you.
you down. I remember that important thing I wanted to tell you. And can I not wait till morning? It cannot. Not be hurried in my own house. Nobody's rushing you. Just whatever it is, say it before I freeze to death. I want to tell you a story. A long time ago, in the time of the Bible, our Lord was traveling around with his mother, the Virgin Mary. This was just after he started the miracles. They were traveling along and they came across a blind man sitting on the side of the road. The Virgin remarked about the man's blindness. Our Lord replied, Aye, he is blind. And even so, his wife is carrying on with another man in the woods. So, I will give him back his sight so he can see her. To which the Virgin replied, If you give him back his sight, give the woman an excuse. Are you listening to me? Yes. Our Lord gives the word. The blind man jumps to his feet. He looks around in all directions. He can see. He looks into the forest and he sees his wife with the other man. She knows he sees her, so she comes to him. He says to her, you were in the woods with that man. And she doesn't deny it. Oh, no. Ah, she says, if I wasn't in there, sure you wouldn't have got your eyesight back. Eh? That was her excuse! Jesus, do I have to spell it out for you? Your wife is carrying on with George O'Flaherty. You knew. You fucking idiot! Will you let her walk all over you? And sleep with my worst enemy and make a laughing stock of the Malonis? Is, is, is that it? Huh? If you don't confront her, I will. Listen, do what you want. Just do it in the morning. Stop shit! Hit me. Go on, hit me. I wouldn't blame you. Always be gentle with you. I want to warn with you. Did George Flaherty lead you on? I you know what you're talking about. Ah. And I take it that you led him on. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. Well, don't you stop it? Sit down while I'm talking to you. Even if you did lead him on, you must never admit it. You have to say it was him. You have to say it before the whole town. Tell them he forced you. <laughs> what kind of trouble do you want me to get into? That's not my problem. Right. I'll go and see Father O'Connor. But you're not to confess everything to him until I tell you. 
Are you not worried about all the scandal? Ha! I'm counting on it. The whole town will know how my family and my good name has been ripped asunder. And they'll know whose fault it is. Ah. <laughs> that George O'Flaherty is after seducing my daughter-in-law. Oh, I see. Um, uh, right, man, uh, you can get on with the work. <laughs> Right. Did you hear what I said, Father? Oh, yes, yes, I heard what you said, Harry, but uh, maybe we should go inside where we can have a nice, quiet chat. It's going to rain anyway, uh, and maybe we should go. Oh, Father! The adulterous bastard! Never you! Uh, to pretend to, 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 to be surprised when you knew all along what that whoremaster was like. Admit it! I most assuredly did not. The yes. Now, you're the priest. Deal with him. Well, I, I mean... Well, you just can't go around. I mean, has anybody seen them? Is there any basis for this accusation? The dogs in the street know what he's like. So you would destroy a man on the basis of rumour? I don't care how he's destroyed. No, you don't mean that, Harry. If you want proof, this town is full of witnesses. Just ask around. This matter will have to be handled with great delicacy. Fair enough. I will have to speak to the witnesses. I'll have them at my house at five o'clock this evening. As many as you want. Look, Harry, I have to hear confession now. If you hang around till I'm finished, well, then maybe we can discuss this matter further. Maybe even have a cup of tea. For fuck's sake, tea. <sighs> well, Father... You wanted witnesses. Here they are. Well, perhaps if he began with Eileen. Eileen, would you take a seat, please, child? I'd rather stand. Very well, then. Answer all his questions now, Eileen. Hmm? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I'm ready when you are, Father. Eileen, I know it can't be easy for you to discuss such a painful and delicate matter as this with strangers. But try not to think of us as strangers, but as friends and neighbours who have nothing but your best interests at heart. If anybody is anything to be ashamed of around here, it's certainly not me. That's right. You tell him, girl. No! You all seem to know already, or think you do. So why don't I just leave it up to your own dirty minds? No, child. We don't require details. If you could just tell us where it happened. In the kitchen. In his wife's bed. On the f f floor of the bar. He seduced her. Had his way with her like he does with all the women he brings to Skillet. Please, Harry. Now, hang on a minute there, Harry. I'm telling you. He forced her. Didn't he force you, Eileen? You see? She's too terrified to speak. Well, you can take it from me. He forced her. Against her will, in the kitchen. In his wife's bed. In the name of God. Why don't you tell the truth, Eileen? Huh? Tell us how he attacked you. He didn't attack me. God help you if you tell lies at a time like this. He didn't attack me. Why are you protecting him? Harry, don't. Well, if she won't tell you, I will. Right. He cornered her. Da. You stay out of this. This has nothing to do with you. He locked the door. Da. Stop it. Would you look at him up on his hind legs? Honey, do you want to go on with this? No. Then you don't have to. We're going to go for a walk. And when we come back, maybe all these people will have gone.
He, he, he locked the door. She couldn't get away. He was listening to me. Fuck you, then! Don't be scared. Finest one in the shop, and the dearest as well. That's you out of a job, Phil. Oh no, this isn't for down here. These hooligans will have it smashed to pieces in no time. Don't worry, Maeve. I'll marry you. <laughs> ah, me two perfect angels. Huh? Look, there's a present for you. You can open that now. <laughs> and wait. Just wait till you hear this fella here. Oh. Do you think I'm stupid, John? Max. Do you think I'm deaf? Do you think I don't know what they're saying about you? Max, Maeve and I. Maeve? I'm talking about Eileen. What? Not in front of me, son. Oh, God forbid he should lose respect for his daddy. No, I say this is Harry Maloney. Is that Harry Maloney? He has an in for me. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. He's not me. I'm not wound up, man. If only you told me yourself. If I didn't have to hear it whispered in the bar below. I bought you. Look, he bought you a present. I bought you a present. And this is supposed to make it all right, is it? Well, I just saw it. I just saw it in a shop. And I thought to myself, Jenny, that would look wonderful on my face. I did. Thank you. Everyone knows about you and him now. You can't cut your tongue, huh? What do you expect me to do? Thank you for spreading a malicious story about me. That's where you're wrong. It's not a story, is it? <laughs> it's true. Every word of it. All you've done is fed gossip to them that you know better. Yeah, yeah, but maybe you're right. Gossip. That's all it is. I'm glad you can see that. <laughs> Finally. There's no use just spreading the story. It's not convincing anybody, is it? Now you're seeing sense, Harry. What? If you hanged yourself. What? Well, your life is destroyed, isn't it? You've said as much yourself. Your life is hardly worth living after what's happened to you. Not to mention the, the, the gossip that has you tried and convicted before you have a chance to tell your own side of the story. Well, that might be true. Yeah, well, that's grand. That's settled then, huh? Yeah. Harry Maloney! 
You think that I'm going to kill myself just so you can get one up on George? Is... No. No, no, you're right. You're right. You could pretend. You could be killing yourself when someone comes in and stops you. Or the result would be the same. Huh? Everyone would know he drove you to it. Oh, my God. And he'd be destroyed, wouldn't he? Think about it anyway, huh? I'll be outside if you need me. You know, if, if you need any help. Goss, come down! I've had enough of this madhouse! Go. She's upset. There's no telling what she might do. Don't worry, she won't go too far. Min, I was uh, I was thinking we uh, that is we were having a chat, Margaret and I. And um... you want me out? God, no! It's not that. No, no, it's not that. It's just that. Um... Well, the thing is, I'd give you a few bob to get you, to get you started somewhere else, you know, and, and uh, I better go and see what's going on with that dog. George, I was waiting for you and the dog wouldn't let me out. You can't come here in silence. Harry put the bad word out and you when you were away. I know, yeah. He wants me to kill myself so you'll get the blame. You won't. What? What? Oh, it's all right, Dad. Yes, it's all right. It's all right. No, Uncle George, I love Gus. Oh, I know Gus is a lovely fellow. He is a smashing fellow. He is. He's a top lad. He doesn't get his due. Does no, he? he doesn't. But this isn't about Gus, is it? It's about Harry, isn't it? And damn, Harry will only be the death of all of us, won't he? <laughs> oh. Rightly fixed now, George Flaherty. Get out, Harry, get out! Oh, I'm going! But I'll be back and I'll bring witnesses! Oh, open this door, Harry! Open the door! Come on. There's another way out. Come on. Ah, do you think Harry? it's stupid, George Flaherty? Ah, huh? right. I believe you had some thoughts in the direction of suicide. Go on, hold on, go on. Come on, come on, come on, I'm not afraid of you. Oh, yeah. I'll take that head of you, I'm telling you. Oh, 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 oh. Now stay away from the place. You're bad. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? Oh, what happened? Your father, he, he attacked George. What? I think he might kill him. Did he hurt you? Jesus, Dad, what have you done to us now? Oh. Oh. Right, you're my witness. Huh? You're my witness. You saw him turn on me and beat seven shades of shite out of me. But there's no mark on you. All right. Jimmy bastard. 
You're my witness! You're my witness! You have as much against him as I do, huh? He led you on and made you a laughing stock, didn't he? Huh? Huh? Now, come here. Come here till I tell you what you saw. No. I didn't see a thing. Why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you, Goss. Oh, Jesus, I don't hate you. Pursued. Oh, no. No. Her ladyship not be joining you. She's upset. Huh? Huh? That makes two of us. Oh. Will you not let me wash your face, Vic? I'll wash my face tomorrow, after Mass. And the whole town has seen what your wife's boyfriend has done to me. Oh. I beat her today. God forgive me. Jeez, I nearly killed her. <laughs> if she's not the one you want to kill, son.
Use the shotgun. Even you can't miss with that. And practice. Don't you make any balls of it. It even smells like him. <laughs> Jeez, will you be careful where you're pointing that thing? Hurt someone. And with what? Try again. You need to pick a good time and place. Maybe Christmas Eve, when he's full of ham and brandy. And that's likely to run you a race. And every door is skill is unlocked to let in the baby Jesus. You don't think it might be time you wash your face now, Dad? There'll be plenty of time for washing my face when George Flaherty is safe in hell. Now go on! What if I can't manage to kill him outright, Dad? What if I only cripple him? That you're crippled for life is fine. Actually, you're not to kill him. Crippled is better. Uh, yeah, practice aiming to cripple the cabbages, not to kill them. What? You killed it! I don't know, Mags. I don't know. <sighs> What's going to happen to you and me if bold Gus Maloney kills your daddy? Have you thought about that? Uh, Mags, your Gus wouldn't hurt a fly. Would he? Cold. That's because you're frightened. Maybe we could take a drop of that stuff with us. Keep us warm. I don't want you drunk on the job. You have to keep your wits about you. We meant to drop. Jesus. Here, have some hot water if you're cold. Why are you doing that? I don't want her sticking her oar in. But she's fast asleep. Don't forget, she's the one who started all this. Yeah, well, you're the one who picked George O'Flaherty for your enemy. Aye, huh? Wasn't I right? Huh? Don't you see that now? Huh? Well, come on, come on. Have for Jesus' sake. Get 
Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! You bitch! What did you do that for? Come on! Tell your no, George! It was an accident. There's no need to fly off the handle. Dirty murdering bastards. No! Did I hit you? No! Thank God! Well, I will the next time. We're going! We're going! We're going! Uh, We're going! Uh, George! George! Now do you see what your fancy man is like, huh? George didn't do this to your ghost, did he? Of course he did. Oh, George bit you. Like the mad dog he is. Jesus, now would you leave off for once? George didn't bite me. His dog bit me. Well, he'll bite no more, huh? Oh, you killed him. Oh, would you listen to the big baba? Boo-hoo. No, we have to leave this house. Where do we go? Oh, I don't care. Just out of here. So where do we go? Gus. Gus. And where are we going? I don't know. Anywhere, as long as he's not there. Da. What are you roaring about? Am I deaf? I'm off now. Well, don't come crying back to me the first time you need your ass wiped. <laughs> I've only patched my here. He's not. Don't I know it? He's in the ground. Where you put him? You put Pat in the ground, and you put Mam in after him. Now put me in the ground. Or Eileen. Do you not have that woman under my roof? I have nothing to worry about on that score. You destroyed my favorite dog. I want compensation. He took a bite out of my Gus's leg. That'd leave him crippled for the rest of his days. And you want money off of me? You owe me. I want paid. Huh? The cabbages are sold. The money is spent. Can't take feathers off a frog. I'll have the slates off that roof for a start. Last chance, Harry. You're gonna pay me.
Not a fucking penny. George Flaherty is stealing the slates off my roof. Harry, this is the confessional. He stole my gun. And now he's stealing my roof. Well, I expect he thinks it's some form of restitution. Huh? Huh? A roof costs a damn sight more than a bloody dog. Harry, remember you're in the house of God. At least God has a house. Has your Bible got nothing to say about that at all? Well, it's a very complicated matter. The best thing I could do is to uh, remember you both in my prayers. Do you know what, Father? I'm not listening to you anymore. George? Jesus Christ. Put the gun down. Put it down. Please.
Say something. Say anything at all. So that's your game, is it? You think you can give Harry Maloney the slip that easy? You will never get away from me, George O'Flaherty. Your children and your great-grandchildren will know what it's like to live under the shadow of my branches. I'm going nowhere, George. When you open your eyes, I'll be there. Come on now. Come on. Are you all right, Harry? Are you all right?
the hunting flight comes from its lair, spreads out its wings and takes to the air. The hunting flight loves all it sees and finds its twin. On the salty breeze For the eye will hear And the ear will see There's no sense to be made Of life's short spring But there's one thing sure Whether coming or going It's a hard old voyage made of your own. Thank you. 